Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. You're part of the free and the people worldwide who have registered to this webcast. This webcast, powered by iMicroUs, will present the advanced RF SIP for cell phones market. Let me quickly introduce the old group of companies. We provide marketing technologies and strategy, media and corporate finance services, reverse engineering and reverse costing services, as well as IP and patent analysis. My name is David Jordan. I'm part of the Sales and Coordination Service from your development. Before starting the presentation, let me give you some practical information. You have the possibility during all the webcasts to submit questions. To do so, you simply have to use the box at the bottom of the screen. It is labeled Ask a Question. We will answer as many questions today as time allows. And for remaining questions, we will follow up with you via email. Concerning the materials and contents of the presentation, please note that they are already available and downloadable in the resources section of the webcast platform. Furthermore, within 24 hours, you will receive also an email after the webcast with the link to the recorded session. Today, your development will share their analysis on the advanced RFSIP for cell phone markets. We are pleased to welcome Santosh Kumar, Principal Analyst and Director, Packaging, Assembly and Substrate from Yol Korea. Santosh, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you, thank you, David, uh, for the introduction. So today the webcast is about the advanced RF system and package for the mobile application. So I will uh, in the first I will uh, talk about the the trends in the RF for the mobile and then uh, uh, go into the the packaging and uh, the aim of this. Uh, Webinar is mainly to discuss about you know the what are the package trend for the RF uh, RF SIP, different kind of modules in the mobile, and then also talk about the the ecosystem supply chain and ecosystem. Okay, so if you see the the cellular uh, technology development, so it's you know uh, from 2G to 5G, it's you know like uh, less than a three decade journey, and uh, so it start at around you know like 1992 and. Uh, <clears throat> On an average, if you see between the two, you know, like the, the technology generation, like from the 2G to 3G and 3G to 4G and 4G to 5G, on an average, it will take around, you know, like like the, the 10 years. Of course, you know, like uh, between the two, you know, like between 3G and 4G uh, or between the 2G and 3G, there are some intermediate technology. It's, you know, like update of the previous generation technologies. And in terms of the data rate, if you see for the 5G, it's, you know, like, if you see theoretically possible data rate, it's really going to, you know, like in the gigabits per second, you know, like for the 5G, going to around 20 GBPS. Uh, but in the reality, in the in the real life situation, we will not achieve so much, but it, it, still it will be more than the, uh, in the, in the gigabits per second range. <clears throat> for the 5G, if you see the, the spectrum defined by the 3GPP, so it's uh, the two, they have divided it into two two segments. It's the sub six gigahertz segment, and it's also called you know like the five G and our uh, FR one band. And in this band we have you know the N seven seven band and N seven eight and N seven nine band. And this band is is called the sub six gigahertz. So it's you know less than the, the six gigahertz frequency. So in terms of you know the implementation, so initially the Korea and Japan they are you know the main user of this. Uh, also called the ultra high band LTE spectrum, and uh, then it will you know like uh, expand into the Europe, China, Russia, Russia, uh, Russia and, and rest of the world. And already you know like the first product supporting these bands, these are in the production. And the second you know the uh, the band is a millimeter wave spectrum, and that is you know like uh, many people are saying that that is you know the real real 5G we can say because here we have you know the the frequency is more than the 24 gigahertz and it's in the range of 24 to 50 gigahertz and 
in, in here, you know, like also there are different bands, you know, like uh, N257 band, 258 band, and 260 band. And uh, so band N27, that is the main band for the 5G millimeter wave rollout in the US, Korea, and Japan. And for the rest of the world, uh, it will be the band uh, N258, mainly it will come next year. And, and the first millimeter wave antenna module, they will support this 257, 261, and, and later they will support the 260 band. In terms of the application, so you can see, you know, like there are, uh, based on uh, the, the, the frequency band defined, there are the different uh, huge cases of this 5G. So basically we can divide it into, you know, like the three, uh, three group. One is we called uh, the sub one gigahertz, that is mainly for the IoT applications. And then we have the sub six gigahertz where we have, you know, like the, the mobile and also we have the different uh, application supporting the, the autonomous vehicle and uh, and, and video tele, uh, teleconferencing, smart grid con uh, connected wearables different thing and then if we go to you know like the millimeter wave 24 more than 24 gigahertz then we have you know like the robotic service and advanced ai assistant autonomous vehicle and cloud computing and a lot of uh, different things and if and one of you know the the key selling point of this 5g especially for the mobile is the very high uh, quality video and real time application ar vr uh, time application so the high quality video, you know, they are uh, driving the demand for this uh, increased bandwidth and the peak data rates and uh, new applications such as the AR and hologram, they're expected to push the, the data rate demand. So if you see currently we are, you know, like you can say the at, at the 4G advanced stage and, and we can say uh, with the, you know, rollout of the different uh, phone. So we can say we are at the, the 4G advanced and brief uh, 5G sub six gigahertz uh, range will be there. If we see the RF uh, content in the, in the mobile, so in every cellular generation, you know, like it all, all leads to the new technology and the additional uh, RF content. So if you start from, you know, like from the GSM to the HSPA, so we have the diversity, you know, um, module integration. And if we go to the LTE, then we have the Wi-Fi and two, two by two MIMO and the carrier integration aggregation and some more high band come into it. And then we further go to LTE. Then there will be more, you know, like carrier components available for the carrier in, uh, aggregation and introduction of the ultra high band. And then for LTE Pro, we have the introduction of this 4x4 uh, MIMO. And for this 5G sub gigahertz, we will have the, the dual connectivity where we, ha we have, you know, like at the same time, our, you know, like uh, the, the user, user equipment, like for example, mobile, they are connected at the same time to the 5G network and also the 4G LT network so that, you know, to take the advantage of uh, uh, the, both the, both the, you know, stand, air extenders at the, at the same time. And, uh, and this dual connectivity and, the, and also there will be, you know, the band reforming, especially, you know, like some of the bands from the, you know, low, low end and the mid high band that will be, you know, really relocated from the 5G sub six gigahertz. They will further expand, you know, the, the RF content uh, in the mobile. Okay. If we see the, the in the smartphone, the basic uh, modules in the smartphone. So we have, you know, like, uh, the display modules, we have the sensor modules, and uh, we have the connectivity modules and, and the RF modules. And uh, so in the, in the RF modules, you can say, you know, like you can see we have the from the modem to the antenna, and between it, there are a lot of the different components, you know, the transceiver, front end modules, power amplifiers, and different kind of the filters. And then we have uh, this uh, connectivity module, and that also we can say is a part of the RF, RF uh, module in there, where we have also the Wi-Fi uh, uh, front-end module and Wi-Fi Bluetooth combined, and also the NFC uh, controller uh, module. In terms of the system of package found in the found in the uh, different smartphone components, so you can see, you know, the the red the red color is the 
the components which are in the system in package and the other uh, the gray color that is not in the system in package so if you see especially you find you know in the, towards the left left hand side where you you can find you know the numerous uh, system in package and they are mainly in a supporting this uh, rf rf components in the mobile and if we see the main uh, RF uh, front end component. So if we can, you know, like the define this RF front end component. So it's, you know, like the set of the different technology and components and mainly situated between, you know, the modem and the antenna and, uh, and they are, you know, like uh, responsible for physically uh, transmitting the receiving information over the air, over the air. And, uh, and also due to the need to implement higher number of bands and increasing, you know, the quantity of circuitry, even the smaller areas, so that's why you know the system in package format it has become you know the next natural uh, progression for packaging these these uh, front end so you can see you know the different path like the the basic uh, receiver path and the transmit path and the, the components you know include the various kind of switches filters amplifiers and and antenna antenna uh, themselves and so you know like Inside, you know, this uh, the front end module. There are different kind of, you know, there are RF front end uh, modules in the mobile. So you, if you see the cellular, so we have, you know, like the the highly integrated PAMID, the power amplifier module with integrated duplexers, and then we have, you know, the PAD, which we can say the power amplifier duplexer modules, where we have the power amplifier and integrated with the duplexer. For the PAMID, we have the power amplifier, low noise amplifier, switchage, different kind of the IPDs they are and, and filters and they are all you know integrated in there and then we have the also the receive diversity module and then we have the antenna switch module module also called the switch plexers then we have the the antenna plexers or multiplexers and then we have the low noise amplifier multiplexer modules also we have the uh, multi board uh, multi band uh, power amplifier sometimes it is you know like uh, they are in the discrete, but sometimes uh, they are uh, available with, you know, like integrated, even though it's the single die, but integrated with a lot of the different passives. So we have counted it into the system in package format. And for the connectivity, we have the Wi-Fi and the front end module and the YGIG uh, front end module. So if we see, you know, like the a kind of the, the architecture for the RF front end module, especially for this uh, PAMID, so here you can say you know like it can include the power amplifier or load plus load noise amplifier filter switches and the antenna tuners and uh, if we see the rf uh, connectivity implementation by the the phone segment so the if we see the value uh, mid end and low end uh, phone versus the premium premium phone so they have, you know, like the different kind of the RF implementation in there. So for the standard smartphone, we have in general, we have the two LAN uh, front end modules, uh, FAMID and a, a multi-mode multi-band uh, power amplifier for low and mid-band, a diversity module for MIMO 2x2 uh, uh, two two, and the high band uh, <clears throat> power amplifier uh, integrated with the uh, duplexer P PMD uh, module. For the high-end smartphones and the luxury premium phones, so already uh, the MIMO 4x4 is implemented. Uh, is implemented, so it leads to you know like more diversity module, and uh, enabling use of the 5G NR band for the downlink. Also, we have you know the low band, mid band, and the high band uh, PMID that will ensure the uplink improvement uh, through more and more uh, the the carrier aggregation. So if we see in terms of the evaluation of uh, evaluation of the evolution of the mobile uh, broadband RF front end evaluation. So if you see like in the in 2017, if we see, so we have you know the different band like uh, different low band module. So it's less than 1.5 gigahertz module. Then we have the middle uh, mid band. So it's between 1.5 to 2, and then above that we have the the high band uh, module between the two and the three and then what happened in 2018 there are you know uh, some more band included in the low band module so we have you know like more filters uh, coming in there and then also this uh, high band and the the mid band 
they you know like they they are integrated and and then there is uh, more you know for the ultra high uh, high band greater than the 3 gigahertz uh, come into this implemented in it for this year for 2019 with the coming of the 5g especially the 5g sub 6 gigahertz we will see there will be more you know like band reforming for the uh, low band module and also band reforming for the as i already mentioned for the this high band plus uh, uh, mid band module there will be more carrier aggregation and in the ultra high band band module so the new new radio the band uh, which support the dual conductivity especially you can see this 5g sub 6 gigahertz so they will be integrated with this uh, uhb module and then we will see you know like for some of the very few devices the appearance of the millimeter wave modules and and if we go to you know like uh, more than uh, further 2020, then we can say, you know, like this millimeter wave module is a separate module. And uh, for this uh, uh, more than 24 gigahertz application, and then we have the low band and ultra high band module and uh, high band and the mid band module so together. So it's can you can see it's kind of the, the four uh, module over there. If, for example, if we see, you know, uh, the iPhone X simplified structure, so what is happening, even though, you know, like if for the iPhone X, even though there is, you know, the increase in the in, in, in the size of this phone, like it's like 5.88, but in terms of the RF component, there are, you know, the, the size decreases because, you know, you, you, you have the bigger battery and you have the new functionalities such as, you know, the facial recognition ID. So, what happened like the, for this RF, so the different, you know, like uh, RF uh, components in this RF, RF board. So the size, you know, it's run to, you know, like around 320 millimeter square and the, for the connectivity, it's run to, you know, like around 160 millimeter square. So there is, you know, the, the, the trend, even though, you know, like the, the smartphone size is uh, relatively increasing compared to before, but because of the integration of the different functionality, also because of the bezel less. And so there is, you know, like uh, the more and more, you know, like uh, the area available for this RF module. And that is very big challenging, especially with the introduction of the 5G in the, in the mobile. So if we see, you know, like the, the structure of this uh, 5G, impact on this RF front end. So you can see here, you know, uh, so we have, we will see, you know, like uh, it is becoming, you know, very, very complex with the integration of the new technology like carrier aggregation, MIMO and dual connectivity. And so we will see uh, like for this, uh, for this uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth module antenna two by two uh, MIMO antenna, uh, it will be maybe shared with the diversity receive module. And then uh, for this power amplifier module, you can say that uh, you can see as I as shown in the previous slide, like this 5G uh, uh, PAM will be implemented over there. And then separately, we have this uh, uh, millimeter wave antenna in package connected to the, the separate uh, millimeter wave basement modem. So we need, you know, the separate uh, modem for this 5G. And uh, here uh, in uh, this antenna is integrated uh, along with the the transceiver IC and maybe with the different kind of the front end components, separate components. So if we see, you know, like uh, the, the, the kind of, you know, the, the 5G trend for the mobile uh, handset, so it's in a kind of the additional RF interface. So initially, like uh, in terms of the, the usage of the, the cellular infrastructure, so 5G phone, they will still use the former, you know, 4G frequencies to their, you know, the fullest extent. And, and in addition to those frequencies, the industry, uh, they will look towards the millimeter wave in order to increase the throughput. And from the technological point of view, millimeter wave oriented RF component uh, should uh, not be able to work with the standard sub six, uh, six gigahertz component, so it will be separate. And it, you know, like it, it's uh, someone can, ex uh, can expect that this, if we add this, you know, the millimeter wave to the standard handset, so it will not be the different, uh, for example, like the addition of the new band, which involves, you know, like the creating the new series of the new RF path for the, with dedicated power amplifier. But actually in the practice, it's likely to be different. So the trend is towards the higher integration for the LTE, 
and uh, much work is also being done towards you know the monolithic integration of all components into the standardized chips and it will come later and also we will see that you know the standard lte rf front end module they will eventually in uh, more and more integrated into cmos compatible technologies with more components and but with the issue with the millimeter wave is that the current CMOS compatible technologies, it cannot uh, offer the expected performance at, at very high frequency. And uh, so we will see, you know, the, the, the gallium nitride wave substrate, they will be, you know, like more and more being looked for this power amplifier to support the millimeter wave. And uh, so integrating it in the, you know, the existing module, which will be, you know, uh, for this millimeter wave will be difficult. And also the this 5G millimeter wave, it's expected to implement the disruptive technologies uh, like massive MIMO at reception. And uh, so those innovations are, you know, like fit for the millimeter wave band, but do not apply much to the sub six gigahertz uh, frequency. So we expect that, you know, there will be creation of the additional modules in the phone, which is dedicated only to the millimeter wave in there. And on the other hand, we will show that, you know, like the RF front end as designated for, you know, 4G, it will continue to evolve in the same direction with additional bands, with additional carrier integration, carrier aggregation, with additional antennas, but more and more uh, integration. If we go to the, the advanced packaging uh, platform, so so these advanced you know like a, a platform we, at the yule we have you know like uh, uh, classified it at the different level so at the vapor level we will see we will have you know the fan in fan out and the 3d tsv based uh, technology the where interconnect can be the t t uh, tsv or through glass via or it can be pump or pillar or it can be the silicon or the glass bridge then at the substrate level or strip level it's it's also you know kind of the panel based so it can be flip chip, flip chip based in terms of interconnect, or it will be the wire bond. And uh, in terms of the, the package, it will be the standard organic substrate packaged or the advanced organic substrate where we have the 2.1D and 2.5D or also embedded package. And the substrate material can be the ceramic, lead frame, and the others. And then if we go more one level below, you know, the, the, the packaging, so it's, you know, like the flip chip BGA, CSP, or LGA, or the wire bond LGA, BGA. And then in terms of the module, we have the, the, the system and package or package and package module. And in, in, in right side, we have the panel level where the panel size is, you know, like, like more than the 300 into 300 millimeter squares, like fan out PLP at the die level. Interconnection can be RDL and substrate is the organic or the glass substrate and another separate is at the second level is the embedded dye in the laminate or, or in the flex and the PCB. So if we see this SIP, so it's, you know, like basically we can divide it into two, two parts. One is, you know, like uh, the substrate based SIP and another is the vapor level based SIP. So in the vapor level based SIP, we have the fan out panel level packaging and pan out vapor level packaging and in substrate based we have this you know the flip chip based wire bond based uh, the packaging and uh, so the system in package you know they can uh, leverage the assembly and packaging technology and ic assembly and packaging plus also the the smt technologies and uh, which we see in at the ems level in the supply chain so the IC and packaging technology, as I mentioned, is, you know, the RDL bumping, copper pillar, substrate, TSB wire bond. And uh, then the SMD technology is the is the paste printing, SMD, passive, pick and place, especially the high 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 speed chips, chip shooters, etc. So if we see, you know, like the inside the RF system in package, and this is the the example of this Avago FEM8072. So this is the mid-high band integrated PMID module. So here we can see, see you know, like there are, you know, a lot of different uh, filters. And it's, you know, like more than, you know, the 10, 12 filters. We have switches, we have the passives, we have the power amplifiers and low noise amplifiers. So here we can see the power amplifiers are still in the wire bonded, uh, wire bonded. And then all others are, you know, in the case of uh, like filters and, and the switchage, 
they are a kind of the WLP package, vapor label package. It may be the solder, solder, solder ball, or maybe the copper pillar uh, interconnect in there. In the right side, we, we can see the RX uh, diversity module. So here we have the filters and switches and low, low noise amplifier. So in terms of the integration, this SIP, they will, uh, you know, like reach really very high level of integration and accommodate the various uh, heterogeneous technologies uh, from like uh, three, four compound semiconductor to the silicon IC, and also they can use, you know, like the, the MEMS technology for the resonators and, and switchage for there. So in terms of the uh, RF front end segmentation, so this is, you know, like uh, the module integration and multiplication, plus we have, you know, the different RF signal multiplexing. There are the main evaluation. If you see the area distribution per function, so we have this PMID that is, you know, like really uh, taking the big area at the high end, end phone. And, and at the low end phone, we have this uh, power amplifier module. and. Uh, also, we see the multiplexers. They have now, you know, like entered the market with quad and the quin flexors. Also, following carrier degradation and the MIMO four by four over there. So, total area, you know, like you can see the the if you go from you know the the mid end phone to the high end phone, we can see you know like the total area is for this RF is RF board is decreasing there. Okay, the power amplifier uh, module uh, densification. So here you can see, you know, like the suppliers, they are moving towards uh, more and more highly integrated solution with enhanced EMI and integrated antenna matching IC. So <clears throat> this is, as I said before, so here we have, you know, in the left side, this is the mid, mid, mid band module and the high band module. So if you can see that for the mid band the area is the 21 millimeter square and the high band is 45 uh, millimeter square. And uh, so it is, you know, like now uh, integrated in this uh, high high midband module. So we have, you know, like uh, uh, compared to, you know, the midband and 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 the low band, we have the increase in the area 85 millimeter square, but we have the decrease in the number of the IOs and more and more, you know, like integration and uh, more filters and the different kind of interconnect in there. And in terms of the requirement uh, for this uh, uh, RF system in package for the 5G in mobile, so we can see you know, the different trends. So as I mentioned, it is the integration of uh, more and more components in the package. So we have more active components, more passive components. And so it also, you know, at, at the component level also, there is the trend of reduction in the size. And also maybe, maybe we'll see that multiple, you know, the the dyes, they will be integrated in the SOC because it's really, you know, uh, becoming very, very difficult to integrate all those different components within the limited area where you have also, you know, when you implement this uh, 5G millimeter wave, you need the multiple, you know, like antenna in package, at least three antenna in package in there. And also the filters, you know, their form factors uh, maybe, you know, decrease during the TSV, for example, stacked filters. And the so there is, you know, like uh, the... Uh, the scaling area is scaling at both the XY and, and also the G height, you know. So we see the smaller component spacing, so higher accuracy and high speed pick and place equipment is required. We will also see, you know, some change in the electro and uh, this uh, EMC molding, uh, maybe with the small filler size so that, you know, like they can be apl applied for these small components. Uh, and we see the small size shape and the, also the double size BGA, molded BGA. So to, you know, like uh, to save the area. So already it, it, it has been implemented where we have in the BGA both side, you know, the different components and active both as passive. We will see the more fine line, line space features for the, for the substrate. And uh, also we see the ultra thin substrate with uh, maybe lesser layers which will be supported by the fine line space features and having the same integration capability. And other is, you know, like uh, for the same SIP height, we will see the use of the thicker passives, which will have the better performance. And uh, for the molding also, we will see uh, that it will 
currently you know it's mainly the transfer molding is used we will see that it may trans it, it it the trend is towards moving to the compression molding because of you know the the it will have the the compression molding has the advantage of the low pressure molding and it will prevent prevent the damage of the components and the cracks in the in the ultra thin substrate and uh, also uh, it has you know in terms of the the tool cost and the material cost so in terms of cost of ownership the compression molding has less cost of the ownership also there is less uh, material loss and it is also you know like widely available at the different of sets and in terms of the shielding where where we see the trend towards you know the the conformal uh, shielding and highly conductive and laser marking visibility and it it should have addition to the package mold and the side wide side wall coverage and low resistance to the ground and in terms of you know like if we see in terms of the cost and the time to market reduction so you know like as i mentioned if you see the sip so it's either you know the substrate based sip or the you know the vapor level based sip so currently it's all you know like these front end modules rf sip they are you know based on the substrate based sip and mainly coreless substrate is used so for the fan out yeah it offers you know the better uh, electrical rf and thermal performance and it fulfill the low g height requirement and it's also you know like uh, currently available at you know the different dosages but compared to you know the the flip chip it's costly and there is also the packet size limitation because of you know if this the, the packet size is big then the, there is the some reliability issue and it has you know the long lead time related to the uh, laminate based solution so currently it will still be i think i see this substrate based sip that will be the main solution and in the due time maybe we will see you know if, if the cost go down and uh, some you know and uh, it will become you know like uh, uh especially the the if this uh, fan out is able to integrate the both side you know like like it can support the do, do, double double side rdl layer then we will see the uh, more and more implementation so currently if you see like the some of the company like for example the, the samsung the samco they have implemented this you know the the both side rdl for their uh, samsung galaxy watch that kind of package is very good you know to support this uh, uh rf sip especially in terms of you know like a lot of the increase in the, the the components and so it will save your area and also have the tighter integration with fine line space uh, features if we see the uh, the technology uh, toolbox for rf sip for 5g mobile so it's you know like as i already mentioned so it will have the dual side assembly and so dual side mold package and we will see the more maybe embedded active and passive and uh, in terms of shielding it will be both conformal and the compartmental shielding and uh, the substrate will be thin and uh, it will be the main, the passive component component it will be you know the more small size the millimeter for the millimeter wave the antenna will be integrated inside the package and low loss material will be needed for the high frequency uh, to prevent the high frequency signal loss if for the high frequency signal propagation and in the terms of the molding we will see more tend towards the 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 compression uh, molding over there so if we see this uh, uh, the package trend for this front end module like the so package evaluation so you can see you know like uh, if we see go to before you know like 2008 where we have only two gs gsm so at that time there will be no front end module there will be mainly the discrete power amplifier and using the lead frame of best uh, solution and the antenna is you know outside the body and uh, so with this 3g we see you know the uh, one one fem will be used for this uh, transmit and receive and then discrete will was still the main you know the power amplifier and uh, and for this the 4g lte we have uh, on an average 3 to 5 you know the front end modules and uh, the power amplifier and the front end module they have in, they have integrated and but that is still the single side sip over there and antenna also you know like have evolved from the phone case and it go to the flex pcb and then as we enter into this 5g space so at first it will be the sub 6 gigahertz here we will see you know like the more uh, 
double side SIP will be there. And uh, in terms of the number of modules, it will be the five to seven uh, front end modules. And there will be this power amplifier and the FEM integration. And if, and in terms of, you know, like the bill of material, Materials uh, for the packaging. So 5G sub 6 gigahertz. It's uh, it. We can say it's a kind of incremental uh, need. It's not very you know like drastic change in the bill of materials. It's still the substrate which is currently used for the 4G LTE that will be the use that 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 can serve the purpose. No need to go to you know like ultra low loss you know dielectrics. But for this 5G millimeter wave that needs a disruptive innovation in the packaging. So we will see the enhanced double side SIP antenna that will you know integrate in, inside the package. Uh, since you know for this 5G millimeter wave, so you know like uh, the as as you know the the loss in the signal is very high because of the short wave length. So we will see the antenna coming more and more you know closer to the transceiver IC RFIC, and also the since for this millimeter wave the antenna size becomes small, so it can be you know like uh, integrated into the package. So in terms of the substrate, we will see the organic, also maybe ceramic coming into it. And the package will be mostly uh, 5G uh, flip chip and uh, introduction of the new material, low loss dielectric mold ATC, and then EMI sealing, different kind of conformal, both compartmental. And uh, also, we will see uh, because you know, like for this 5G millimeter wave module, so power dissipation is is big issue in there. You know, thermal thermal is big issue. So maybe we will see the RFIC, this power management IC, maybe integrated inside it, inside the module. And if we go, you know, like more further, you know, like uh, like high end of this this 5G, then we will see the coming of maybe the fan out uh, vapor level packaging or PLP and antenna may be integrated in the thin pin bar DL and uh, we will see the introduction of the glass substrate and uh, and uh, more, you know, like uh, uh, high grade of the low loss and the electric uh, mold ATC materials and the new, new kind of filtering technology may be spotting film. And in terms of the integration, maybe we will see the, you know, the, the modem integrated uh, with this, the power amplifier and antenna, RFIC, and the and the front end uh, module. So, if we see this assembly and the packaging uh, market for uh, RFC for the mobile, so we can you know like uh, divide the packaging of this RF components at the two level. One is at the vapor level, and other is at the SIP level. So at the vapor level, that is prior to the SIP assembly. So we have, you know, like the different uh, components, like the filter, switches, and power amplifiers, and different components. So they are, you know, like like for example, filters. So they are uh, for the SIP assemblers, like for the SR. So they are available as the SMT components. But you know, uh, at the vapor level, you need to do, you know, like the cap vapor bonding or the TSV packaging or maybe the RDL and UBM or bumping and and dicing. And also, you know, the, the components, they are also available as the bare die in the wafer form. And uh, so they are mainly, you know, like uh, use the wire mounted process, but there also you need to do the vapor grinding, dicing, and, 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 and the testing and inspection in there. So that is also a part of the packaging market. And then further we have, you know, like at the SIP level, we have the this uh, the SMT wire bond molding, sealing, and the BGA, LGA, and the test. So if we see the, the total uh, assembly packaging market for this RF uh, SIP in the mobile. So if you see the vapor level packaging, so that will be uh, around 9% of the, the total packaging market in 2018 was 3.3 billion uh, USD. And 9% will be around the WLP and mainly 91% will be the SIP. Same trend, you know, like we'll see it will continue. But the total packaging market uh, will grow at 11% CAGR to reach to, you know, like $5.3 billion uh, market. And uh, in terms of the different kind of, you know, the, the front end modules I, I mentioned over there. So PMID will be, will have, you know, like uh, in 2018, it has the, the around 23% market share over uh, Share and that share will continue to increase over there, and and we believe that in 2023 it will go to around you know like 40% uh, market share will be there. Then we have you know like the PM or PAD module 
that will we see you know like more you know that decrease and it will be more and more going towards this pmid and uh, receive diversity module that we will that share will increase and uh, so it will be you know like increase to around 15% and because of this more and more you know the carrier aggregation and in terms of and uh, for this uh, wifi will also increase and in terms of the y gig fem we don't see much implementation of the y gig uh, uh, front end module in the mobile maybe at you know like the, the mid end phone but uh, it's not so much you know like integrated in the mobile maybe we will see more and more at you know like uh, for the gaming and all, all, all the consumer, you know, like the, the home application in there. And uh, millimeter wave uh, module, uh, front end module, it will currently, you know, like last year it was, you know, there is no uh, any any market in there, but it will grow to around, you know, like 4% uh, by uh, 2023. And if we see the evolution of the antenna in the smartphone, so, so into the so antenna is you know it was outside the smartphone body and then it it you know like come to the cage and with the 4g it went on the flex and then for the 5g especially for a millimeter wave it's integrated in the package and as i mentioned uh, for the millimeter wave uh, uh, frequency long path from the semiconductor package to the uh, antenna it result in the higher losses making it uh, uh, desirable to integrate the antenna as well into the system in package. And uh, also uh, high frequency, it requires the smaller antennas, which uh, from a footprint point of the view, it would be uh, easier to integrate into the SIP. Uh, currently, however, you know, like a single antenna, it need to work with, you know, the number of the different uh, frequency bands with, uh, with the multiplexers and the antenna switch modules. And uh, so it will, you know, like complicate the antenna form and the attached uh, circuitry. So if we see the, uh, antenna for the, uh, yeah, 5G sub six gigahertz smartphones. So for this 5G sub six gigahertz, uh, the major evolution in antenna are mainly uh, driven by increasing the number of the bands and the quantity of the antennas. So the optimization of the architecture and its placement and layoffs are their key to design of the performance. And the key consideration are, you know, the MIMO technology, it become compulsory to support the high data rate transmission. Also this additional antenna uh, to support this 5G sub gigahertz band. And compared with the current, you know, the 4G phone, uh, we will see the small change in terms of the electrical parameters that will be the satisfied by the current material. So we don't see the new requirement of the no requirement of the new materials. And however, you know, like with the increasing band and the antenna quantity within the similar phone size, it will affect the efficiency of the antenna, their isolation levels and envelope correlation coefficient and uh, coexistence level with the systems as well as, well as with the over the air performance. Uh, sustainability in the different uh, user cases. Uh, sorry, <laughs> this slide is, yeah. So this is the antenna for this 5G uh, millimeter wave smartphone. So here we will see the radical change in antenna design because the here the, the phased array antenna is, is needed for, you know, like for the beam forming and to make it, you know, the, the signal, signal more directional towards the user uh, equipment devices and uh, to compensate for high loss, losses at this millimeter wave frequency and to improve the spatial coverage. Another is this uh, antenna is integrated with RFIC inside the same package and it will require the low loss material uh, to limit the signal loss in high frequency environment and uh, to attain the better spatial coverage of the beam forming uh, antennas and the complementary radiation pattern. So we will see, you know, like the two kinds of the antenna. So one will be the phased array, so patch antenna, and also another is the dipole. For example, the Yagi antenna will be, you know, like implemented to cover, you know, like the, the overall, you know, the complete, you know, the 3D coverage. 
and uh, in terms of the number of the anti nine package so minimum 3 is required to prevent the signal loss because of the obstruction by the hand or by metal or other substance and another consideration uh, such as thermal management solution of aip and or the phone case material type or gap between the AIP and the phone case etc they are also very very uh, crucial for the implementation of the antenna for 5g in the smartphone <clears throat> in terms of the the package for antenna and package so it's you know like the three kind of the, the the packaging solution is there so one is the split chip so where we have you know like uh, the rf transceiver ic is integrated in the same, you know, like the substrate where we have uh, the antenna is formed over there and antenna, is antenna and integrates are uh, elements are fabricated inside the substrate. So we have, you know, the patch, we have the, the patch antenna and also the dipole antenna. And uh, and then this module is, is, you know, like put it over the over the board. Another we have the, the fan out where we have uh, the RF chip. They are, you know, like uh, integrated with the with the RDL and and uh, so we have you know like the 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 both side RDL so top side we will have the patch and the bottom side will act as the ground for them but then you know like for this millimeter we, we need a certain height you know uh, in there so that is also very very critical uh, consideration another is you know is a kind of the package on package type where you know the antenna is uh, separately you know fabricated and then you know like attached uh, to the to the bottom package which which have the different you know the, the transceiver ic rf ic's and different components in a pop uh, format over there so we will see you know mainly this flip chip type or pop type that will be you know the mainly uh, implemented currently and then in the future we will see the fan out uh, will also uh, come into picture So if we see, you know, like uh, this antenna in package, so already, you know, like uh, uh, last year we have uh, one phone, uh, SS uh, Gen Phone Pro. They have implemented uh, this AIP for this Y gig uh, front end module. So, so th this module, you know, they are integrated into this uh, this phone, and it it has the two system which is linked by the coaxial connection. So both are, you know, the system in package, and they use this double side molded packaging. And uh, this module is developed by the Murata. And uh, one is, you know, like integrated to the main board and other features, the innovative antenna integrated into the PCB. So you can see over here, you know, so the ante antenna, uh, we have, you know, the uh, RFIC, that is, you know, the, the flip chip uh, bonded to this uh, antenna substrate. So that is eight layer SIP, and then the antenna is, fabricated on this this uh, substrate and then uh, bottom layer is the four layer uh, pcb substrate and then you know like we have the, the thick uh, upper pillar over here you know connecting the both top and the bottom uh, substrate over there and it, it is developed by the the subsidiary of the qualcomm velocity and it, it features up to uh, four transceivers and it control up to 32 antenna both the pipe, uh, patch and the dipole so we have the patch, we have the phased array, and for the dipole, we have the Yagi type of antenna. And it is uh, for the 60 gigahertz implementation, Y gig implementation. And uh, both have, you know, like very thin uh, PCB substrate and uh, embedded uh, copper pillars. And it, it, it was the first integration of this millimeter wave device. And now, you know, the Qualcomm, they have also uh, have their uh, different uh, uh, antenna in package modules uh, and for both you know the for this millimeter wave uh, application in there and the and you know the package size is is, is around you know like 40 millimeter uh, square and uh, so overall if you see this the sip so it integrate around 20 antennas and rfic and also have the thermal management and the isolation solution in single package in there Now we come to the substrate uh, material for the millimeter application, especially, you know, where we have, you know, the single substrate that can support the antenna and also the uh, this uh, RFIC. So basically the substrate can be, you know, divided into the core material or the dielectric RDL material and the core can be, you know, the organic laminate and, uh, and, and it can be ceramic. 
and it can be glass and then for the dielectric or build up material we have the pre bay or the build up field film and you know like for the high frequency signal transmission there are different kind of losses so we have the dielectric loss and this this you know like depend on the electrical properties of the material and uh, it can be reduced if you reduce the decay and df of the material and then we have the conductor loss and this you know like uh, mainly comes uh, from the surface roughness and some kind of you know like discontinuity in the surface and uh, if we have very good you know addition between the dielectric and the conductor and the, and the, the plating smoothness so this kind of losses can be you know like uh, can be reduced that's why i think uh, one of the big advantage of this fan out over the split chip is you know like th that it can reduce this kind of you know the conductor loss and then we have the radiation loss and it's mainly depend on the design and structures or condition so like for example the strip line kind of the, the circuit it exhibits you know like no radiation loss whereas the the micro strip and the coplanar web guide it are prone to you know like the radiation loss at the millimeter wave frequency so there are you know like the three basic materials so the laminate and the glass and the ceramic so if we benchmark these various substrate materials for the different criteria so like they are you know the multi layer capability electrical properties and conductor processing capability like forming you know the line space in there and surface roughness thinness size cost and material supply chain so overall you know like in terms of the various properties so glass they take a lot of you know like uh, uh, the the requirement but the supply chain, in terms of the supply chain is still you know not ready and uh, and also uh, for the, you know the the packaging companies they have not so much you know experience with the glass so even though glass has very good properties but it still uh, it take time you know to to supply chain to come into place so overall if we see the implementation of there so so organic laminate it will be the the main material already implemented so it will continue to be implemented for this 5g sub gigahertz and uh, also for the 5g millimeter wave but we will see also some kind of ceramic limited adoption and the further you know like if you go to more you know advanced millimeter wave and then we will see the ceramic and the and the, and the glass they will uh, become uh, one of the, the solution over there in terms of this uh, rf uh, ecosystem complexity if you see this uh, front end ecosystem so we have uh, at the module stage we have uh, uh only you know the five suppliers who supply this front module so we have the broadcom and murata skyworks corvo and the qualcomm tdk now merge over there so it's five players and then the, if you see the different components like switch filters and power amplifiers and tuners all these so we have the different you know the com uh, companies and then there are quite some companies in this filter ip design and uh, then we have the different OSATs over there and the modem. So we have different uh, companies like Qualcomm, Samsung, Intel, they are in the modem. And uh, Intel recently ex exited last year, yesterday the news has come. They increased, they exited the modem business for the cell phone, but they will be in the, for the PCB, PC servers and also for the infrastructure. Overall, you know, to summarize, so total uh, packaging market will grow at you know like 11% to reach around 53.3 billion market and uh, so for 4 GLT they use the multi die system in package for uh, front end module as well as you know the filter banks and diversity receive modules and uh, so currently if you see in general 4 GLT they uh, front end module they compromise they compromise 10 to 15 dies utilize you know the flip chip so in terms of the interconnect, we will see, you know, more and more, you know, like interconnect power amplifier, it will completely move to the copper pillar in there. And uh, we will see more, uh, you know, like uh, fine line space. And for this 5G sub 6 gigahertz, we will see the more, you know, like double-sided flip chip package with uh, similar bill of materials, incremental innovation. It is the 5G millimeter wave where we need, you know, the really disruptive innovation. Antenna technology in placement, it is one of the most critical challenges for semiconductor system. So that is uh, very critical. Another thing, sealing and molding, all these are very, very important. So with this, I conclude my uh, presentation. So thanks for your attention and uh, the material for this 
presentation comes from a different report. We recently published this uh, advanced RF histamine package and the status of the advanced packaging 2018 and the fan out uh, packaging 2019. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot, Santosh, for this interesting presentation. Uh, we will now going to wrap up with a Q&A session uh, as we are a bit late behind schedule with uh, only the time for one question. So Santosh, uh, what are the ch chances for fan out WLP and PLP adoption for RF SIP, including uh, antenna in package? So as I, as I mentioned before, so in terms of the technology and benefits, those are very, very good uh, technology. But still, I think uh, the cost is one of the big barriers. And, uh, and, and you know, like uh, since uh, for this double side, you know, uh, keeping of the components or also integ antenna integration, we need, you know, like the, the double side RDL over there. And that I think uh, is current mainly, you know, like uh, the companies like Semco, they have and TSMC also they have, but the OSATs, they have, you know, like the, in, still in the development. So it will take some time when the, you know, yield will be good and uh, the cost will go down. Then I think it will be implemented. So I see, you know, like maybe around 2021, 2022, around that. Thanks, Salat Slantosh. The So the webcast is ending. You will get in 24 hours an email that will include the recorded session. Feel free to uh, share the presentation of Santosh uh, to whom will benefit from this information that have been presented. And also let me remind you that you can find all our analysis and report on our new website, imicronews.com, i-micronews.com. So do not hesitate also to contact us if you have additional question you can find the contact on the last slide of the presentation. We'll be glad to answer you uh, via email. Thanks a lot for joining us today and have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye, thanks.